Are you ready to start taking commissions but have no idea where to begin when it comes to how much you should charge, how to take those payments, and setting up your terms and conditions for working with clients? Well, you've come to the right place because we're going to cover all of that and more in this part two video of how to take our commissions. Let's get into it. <music> beginning, talking about money can be really intimidating as an artist since a lot of artists are doing it for the love of making art and growing their skills, but would also like to, you know, eat and pay bills and stuff like that. I know when I first started out, it felt weird and awkward to talk to people about prices, especially face to face with a person. But the great thing about online commissions is that you can type it all out beforehand and have less interactions with people. But as comic maker, the less you interact with people, the more you start to spiral down into a closed-minded abyss where talking with people about basic day-to-day -day things can raise your anxieties and make you forget how to human good. Soon, you'll start to slowly slip into madness and create friendships with inanimate objects that reside in your domestic prison. From there, these objects start to become your friends and you end up making a banana that can talk and- Wait, what was that last part? It was nothing. Carry on. Huh. I'll just repress that, I guess. Anyway, if you're starting out and you're still working and studying art and are feeling timid on pricing, please make sure you give a price that is at least worth your time. It could be easy to fall into saying things like, well, I'm not that good yet, so I'll charge low. But just keep in mind that if you lowball your art, then the general consensus for people who are looking for artists to commission is that they can get art cheap from somebody else out there. We need to try to beat this out of people, so here's what you can do. In part one, which Charlie and I card for here. We talked about making examples for commissions and I mentioned how you can time yourself. And that's where this part's going to come into play. You should honestly at the very least charge minimum wage. So currently in my state the minimum wage is $8.65 an hour which is gross but off topic. Anyway so that means if you spend four hours working on a piece you should at the very least charge around $35. So if you're really set on charging lower at the beginning keep this in mind. I charge a base price for my commissions depending on what it is and then I factor in my years of skill and experience, details in the drawing, added characters or backgrounds in the piece, and then I can adjust my price accordingly. Also, if you're doing a traditional commission, you should of course include the cost of materials. If it's paints, you can include a fraction of the price, but things like canvas, the person commissioning you should be paying for those materials. Now you've probably heard of or seen those choosy beggars that will try to make you feel bad or tell you that your art isn't worth it, but forget those guys. Be firm. If anyone ever tells you that it's too much, then that's on them, not you. You should absolutely be compensated for your time, and if they're threatening to go elsewhere, well, let them go. So let me show you how I break down pricing for one of my commissions. Keep in mind, this is my current pricing, so this is subject to change over time. As an example, here are two drawings of the VTubers Corone and Pecora, and I would consider these commissions to be full body, full color chibis, and based on time and experience, I price at $60 for the character. If there's usually a minor item included, I don't charge for it, but for the tennis ball and beanbag chairs, I would charge $10 extra for those pieces, making these drawings $70 per image. I then usually provide the commissioner a transparent background version, and then one with a white outline, and then a version where it's just the basic background of my choosing, unless they have a specific color request. As another example, for a commission like this one, I would charge $130. $35. I still consider these chibis, so it would be $60 for a full body, full color character, plus $35 per additional character, and then $40 for the background. Obviously, you should charge based on your own calculations, but this is a price that I'm really comfortable with. If you're new to talking about prices with a commissioner, it can be pretty nerve wracking, so what I usually do is break down the payment and explain the cost of the commission. For example, I'll say, with the commission that you're looking for, it will cost $135, $60 for the full body color chibi, $35 for a second character, and $40 for the background. Then I usually say, take your time and think about it, and if you're interested, let me know and I'll send you my payment information slash invoice. That way it gives them an out to step away if it's just too pricey for them, but the information is there if they do want to proceed. Usually if the price isn't right for them, I just end up not hearing back from them, which is fine with me. So now that you've figured out what kinds of commissions you're going to offer, you've set up all of your examples, you've figured out your pricing and you've made a clear list 
listing and you've updated all of your social media, here comes the hard part, waiting to be commissioned. You can spend all of this time posting and making new examples and using every hashtag under the sun and still not get any commissions. If you don't already have a decent online presence, it can be pretty difficult to find work. Even as my channel was growing, I was finding it really hard to get as much commission work as I would have liked and it can be discouraging and disheartening, but there are ways that you can also go seek out commissions as well. I've seen artists with mixed feelings about working on places like Fiverr or things like that, so you can absolutely go that route, but I mean going and looking online for people who are seeking artists for projects. People on Twitter make posts about looking for artists or animators for projects all the time, and if you even go to Google and search looking for artists or artists looking for work, you can find recent posts and forms there. You can then respond with your portfolio or commission information and email and see if they're interested. Now you might come across some people who are a little ambitious and under budget for being able to afford you, but that's where you kind of just keep looking around and finding something that might fit for you. You can even offer sales on your social media as you're starting to build yourself up too. Often people will search for sales on commissions on places like Twitter, but make sure, like I said, that you don't sell yourself short. It might take some time and work seeking out commissions, but if you're eager and want to start building up commissions, that's just another thing you can do while you wait for people to approach you. I would also recommend continuing to post your own projects and keeping up with your socials online as you continue to grow and build an online presence. I'm not always the best at keeping up with posting my art on social media, but I'm more consistent with my YouTube channel and get approached on Twitter and Instagram because of that nowadays. Then next is how to pay. This is totally up to you and what kinds of payment methods you want to hook up your bank account to or what works best for your country that you live in. PayPal seems to be the most common and is the payment method that I use most often for commissions, although I have also used Cash App before. I'll typically wait until the price has been decided for the commission before I send my payment information to a client because once a price is agreed upon, you can then send your payment link with PayPal or you can create an invoice. If you're working on being self-employed, it's good to have an invoice list and you can also set your invoices to receive partial payments, which comes in handy when you're doing bigger commissions. Let's actually talk about that. It's important to be firm about pricing when it comes to commissions. Give your prices and set your rules. Here's how my commissions typically operate. After a price for the commission is agreed upon, I give them the option to either pay up front in full or 50% of the commission. This ensures that all of the planning and sketching is paid for so that my time is compensated. After this, I send the client an update with the final sketch and let them know that if they approve of this stage, then no other changes can be done to the drawing unless they are very minor. This is also their opportunity to make any revisions needed for the commission. An important side note about this part. If at the end of your commission, you're asked to make changes to the art that would require you to redraw, line, and color a section such as limbs or things that would greatly alter the drawing, make sure that you charge a fee. Because by the time I get to the lining and coloring stage, I have already gotten the okay from them for the sketch. If this makes you a little bit nervous, make sure that you add it into your terms and conditions that any drawing altering corrections in the piece are going to have a fee. Anyway, once I finish the line art and color of a commission, I will show the final product to the commissioner with a watermark on the commission. This is super important. If you don't know what a watermark is, it's essentially a way to kind of protect your art. You can either put a logo that you've created or a transparent version of your name across the art piece. I've heard horror stories about artists giving the final work to the client and then not being paid. So all you have to do is show them the art with the watermark and let them know that once you've received final payment that you'll send over an unwatermarked version. This of course only applies to if the commissioner did half payment. If they paid in full at the beginning, then this isn't necessary. And like I said, all of this should be clear in your terms and conditions. In your terms and conditions, you should include any other rules or things that the client should keep in mind when commissioning you. For example, letting them know if you're going to post the work you did for them on your social media. Sometimes you'll get commissioned for gift art that they might ask you to wait to post, so make sure that you ask. But you can also talk about the wait time and how long you typically need to work on a commission in your terms as well. If you exceed this time, please keep in mind that being unprofessional and completing work will only harm your ability to continue getting commissions. People talk and if you ghost them after taking their money, you can imagine that they won't be happy about it. Sometimes I might take longer on a commission because of the other projects I'm working on in the meantime, but I usually let my commissioners know and will update them with progress pictures as I go along. Of course, emergency and life happens, but it isn't the fault of the person who commissioned you, so do your best to keep up with the work that you take on, and if you absolutely have to cancel a commission for someone, expect to return their money as well. I would suggest
suggest having a slot limit to how many commissions you can take on at one time. I have mine set to three at the max, and if people approach me, I'll let them know if I'm available or not and where they fall on the list. You can of course also update your social media and let people know when you're open or closed for commissions. I typically only have, like I said, three slots open at a time since I'm also working on videos and will usually finish my work that I receive within a month at the absolute latest, but you can set your commission slots to whatever works best for you. Lastly, I would make sure that you send your commissioner their images in a way that won't compress the art. It's also another one of the reasons why I work through email because it's just easier that way. But there are also file sharing links that you can make as well if your art is just too dang powerful. And with all of this, you should hopefully have completed a successful commission. It sounds like a lot, but once you get into the rhythm of things, you'll get the hang of it. I mean, it can be overwhelming and weird to start talking about money for your work, but with the time and effort you've put into your craft, you should absolutely be paid for your work. I know that you can do it. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them below. I'll respond to as many people as I can. But with that being said, that's it for this one. If you haven't seen part one where I talk about creating an information page with all of your commission stuff in one place, setting up your social media with your information, and the types of commissions to maximize your commission inquiries, don't forget to check out that iCard or I'll leave a link in the description. As always, videos like this are possible because of my amazing banana members and people like you who like, comment on, and share my videos. I appreciate you all stopping by and I hope that we can draw together again soon. Bye guys.